Now at six, we have a severe threat for thunderstorms rolling in tonight. I'm going to break this down for you. Plus, Freeman Health System breaks ground on a new building. We'll have details and how inflation is impacting local family farms. I'm Jalen Banks with more on the story. The four states most watched news starts now. There's a chance of severe weather in parts of the area tonight that could cause some flooding in low level areas. This is KOAM News at 6. We go straight to Doug Hetty for our first look at the weather. Yeah, scattered showers and thunderstorms will continue to increase over the next few hours, especially late this evening into the overnight hour. So it's going to be a little bit of a loud night, especially if you live from Joplin northward south of I-44. Not too much action through most of the overnight hours. Severe threat now until 3 a.m. Tornado threat is low, but there is a threat. We're going to elevate hail, wind and rain as we go through the overnight hours. Not too much going on here. We've had some spotty little showers try to pop up across the region, but besides that, the immediate area, we're not seeing too much going on right now, but we do have a big cluster of showers, thunderstorms, a lot of severe weather just to the west of the viewing area and these are going to push into our western counties as we go through the next couple hours. So we're going to break this down and also what's going to happen later tonight here in just a bit. See you then. Rising fuel prices have forced some local farmers to increase prices and adjust their fuel consumption. KOIM's Jalen Banks has more. Inflation continues to rise across the country, most notably with fuel prices. This has impacted local family farms forcing them to make changes that they did not want. The Mahler family farm and the Stormy farm have both had to increase their prices due to inflation. And as of right now, it looks like that's a trend that's going to continue. And we've had to raise our prices because of it. So we used to give, uh, there used to be $3 a pound for blueberries and strawberries, now it's three fifty dollars a pound. Not only have they had to adjust their prices, but take into account when to travel and when not to. As far as, you know, getting back and forth and, you know, you see days like this and you're like, well, is it even worth it to go to the market because we're under severe thunderstorms? Am I going to make my gas money well, and, and profit? According to AAA, the national average price of diesel fuel is at $5.52, which is up 42% from a year ago. Doing things on the farm with tractors and machines costs money and... If we're not making enough money to put fuel in the machines, then it gets much harder to do the work that we have to do. In Southwest Missouri, Jalen Banks, KOAM News. Again, AAA says the national average price for diesel fuel right now is $5.52 per gallon. In our states, it ranges from a low of $5.05 per gallon in Oklahoma to a high of $5.17 in Arkansas. AAA says the national average for a gallon of regular gasoline is 462 in this area it ranges from 403 in Joplin to 414 in Crawford County, Kansas. Freeman Health System has begun work on phase one of its expansion plan. Officials today broke ground on a new medical office building in Joplin. The building will be three stories, cover more than 30,000 square feet. It allows offices for physicians specializing in pain management, dermatology, urology, and general surgery. Officials say this is just the first step in the company's expansion plans. We have had a need to construct a new building for some time now, so we've just been waiting for the right time for the groundbreaking, but our doctors are very, very busy, and as we've been able to recruit new doctors, we find we're running out of space. The new building, located at 3401 McIntosh Circle, is expected to cost more than $10 million. Officers with the Grand River Dam Authority are investigating a drowning at Flint Creek near Salem Springs, Arkansas. Authorities say a boy jumped into the water from the top of the Flint Creek Dam Saturday afternoon and his 42-year-old father, Jose James Flores, went in to rescue him. Police say both the father and son were underwater for five to seven minutes before being rescued by citizens who gave them CPR. Authorities say the boy, whose name and age were not given, was revived at the scene, but the father died at a local hospital. A Marionville, Missouri man is dead from a motorcycle accident last night. Police say 47-year-old James Weber was riding a motorcycle on Highway 60 near Central Avenue in Marionville when the bike left the road and hit an embankment. 
Weber, who was not wearing a helmet, was thrown from the bike. He later died at the hospital. A suspected serial killer in Missouri faces another murder charge. Already he's charged in St. Louis and Kansas City, Kansas, and he's now being charged in Kansas City, Missouri. Reporter Emily Rittman has that story. After a series of deadly shootings in St. Louis and Kansas City, investigators developed a suspect using ballistic evidence and surveillance video. Their suspect, Perez Reed, had a distinct crescent tattoo on his forehead. He was reportedly seen on surveillance video in KCK with two murder victims before their deaths. To our knowledge, there is no connection between any of these victims. Uh, these just seem to be random acts. The random killings devastated the victim's friends and relatives. What would give a person in their heart to do something like that to so many individuals that you don't even know? A task force arrested Perez Reed on November 5th of last year. During his arrest, investigators seized a gun that they believe was used during the killing spree and a set of keys and debit card belonging to Stefan Johnson. Johnson was found inside a closet in his apartment with a gunshot wound to the back of his head. Investigators say they found DNA on Swisher Sweet Cigarellos found in Johnson's apartment, but the crime lab testing revealed, quote, strong support that Reed is a contributor of DNA, end quote. A check of security log showed Reed visited Johnson's apartment several times before his death. Reed is charged with first-degree murder for Johnson's death, armed criminal action, and two counts of fraudulent use of a credit or debit card. Reed is currently in custody in St. Louis. Jackson County prosecutors requested that he be held without bond for the new charges he faces for Johnson's death. Reporting from Kansas City, Emily Rittman, KCTV5 News. Coming up, Mercy Hospital in Joplin is giving back to its community. We'll tell you why. Plus, the Joplin Public Library has started its summer reading program. We have how you can get involved. The Pittsburgh Area Chamber is collaborating with the Chamber of Commerce Executives of Kansas and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas. They're creating the Chamber Blue of Kansas. This is a new health plan that will allow 38 local chambers and their member businesses to pool their employees. We're excited because it will potentially not only lower the, the health insurance cost for employers who are currently providing health insurance, but it could also increase the number of businesses that will be able to offer health insurance that maybe are not currently doing so. The move will allow these employees to access health insurance savings that are found with usually large group medical coverage. Mercy Hospital in Joplin is celebrating its 125th anniversary by giving back to the community. The hospital today hosted an event to connect the employees with area organizations for volunteer opportunities. Officials say employees are working on a goal of committing 125 acts of kindness in the community in honor of the anniversary. A lot of people want to volunteer, but they don't know where to go. So this gives them that opportunity to uh, meet people, know what, what's going on, and maybe they can find a path uh, to volunteer a little bit more or designate their time to that organization. Mercy Hospital Joplin, originally St. John's Medical Center, was founded in 1896 by the Sisters of Mercy. Joplin Public Library is kicking off summer with Oceans of Possibilities. Their summer reading program is free to the community. You do not have to have a library card to participate, and anyone of any age can join. You'll track your reading and complete tasks to win prizes at the end of the program. Favorite thing that's happened over the last couple weeks is as kids wrap up school, we've had a lot of families come in asking if the reading challenge has started yet. Um, for a lot of families, it's a tradition for them. The Oceans of Possibilities reading program started today and it runs through July 24th. A little bit later, a former Crowder Rough Rider has a big night in the MLB. Plus, we have thunderstorm threat for us tonight. We're going to look at that coming up. Well, showers and thunderstorms will increase once again for us as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Right now, not too much going on, 
but things will really pick up over the next uh, few hours. We do have at least a low severe threat. Most of us along and north of I-44 timing really from now kind of a late night until about three, maybe four o'clock in the morning. Overall tornado threat is low. We're going to have to elevate hail, wind and rain. But again, this is mainly the metro points north. If you live along and south of I-44, you're not going to have much of a severe risk as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Can't see a flash flood watch. Really just about everybody along and north of I-44. We've had a few scattered little showers popping up southwestern Missouri, but all the big guys, they have been just to our west, just west of our viewing area and kind of starting to push into the region. There we go. And we have a severe thunderstorm watch out across our western counties. But if we uh, look at these storms, uh, pushing into Greenwood County, western parts of Greenwood County. These are mainly hail makers. This one just to the west of Chautauqua County. This has had a very tight rotation on it for about uh, 30, 45 minutes or so. And these extend back to just to the south of Wichita. So we're kind of watching this cluster. In fact, if I get a little wider view, most likely what's going to happen here is these three will kind of push in and then start to weaken once they get to Iola, Chanute, Fredonia, and the other shade, but definitely a severe threat for the next couple hours. Then behind it, you can see this flaring up toward uh, just to the northwest of Wichita. That will become a big complex and work in, but that's really not going to affect most of us until after about 10 p.m. tonight. So we have the initial supercells. Everybody else pretty good. Kind of dying, and then a bigger band works in after about 10 or 11 p.m. And these will most likely have uh, large hail, gusty winds, 60, maybe upwards to 70. So we got to watch this band. So it's going to be a late night. I do think once they get into the metro, they will start to weaken a bit. So south of I-44, you're not going to see any rain until probably after 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Right now we look OK. Nice shot. Lander Chevrolet on the southeast side of the city through the evening hours. We drop back through the 80s, 70s. Of course, those thunderstorms increasing as we go through the overnight hours for us tonight. So bands of showers, thunderstorms, I think we'll start the day here 730 in the morning, a little bit on the wet side. Then we kind of dry out and then showers and thunderstorms pick up again, especially as we head into the afternoon. Some of those could be a little bit stronger, most likely just strong storms. Very low severe risk, but we do got to keep our eyes on that, especially along and south of the I-44 corridor tomorrow afternoon where it will be a little bit more unstable. Scattered thunderstorms tomorrow night. Most of these will be out of here Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon looks pretty good as we go into the lower 70s for highs. All right, flash flood watch, rainfall amounts. A lot of areas are going to pick up one to three inches of rain. We're still pretty saturated from the 10 to 12 inches we had just about 10 days ago. So watch out for flash flooding. 78 tomorrow, 74 Thursday. Thunderstorm chances back in late Friday into the weekend. Okay, well, we had a nice weekend previously. We did, we did. Paying the price now, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Thanks, Doug. Hey, when severe weather strikes, you're going to want to stay informed. You can do that by scanning this QR code. You can do it right now. It'll take you to the KOIM News Now YouTube page where our weather team is going to live stream during severe weather events to give you updated information. Hey, and while you're there, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Still ahead, a pair of Joplin High School seniors claim individual state track and field championships. And a former Crowder pitcher enjoys a career night on the mound for the Milwaukee Brewers. Jacob Leonard joins us with that and more up next. The Joplin High School boys track and field team finished in second place at the Class 5 state championships over the weekend. Now the Eagles were led by a pair of seniors who both captured individual state titles. Donovan Fowler won both the long jump and the triple jump. In the long jump, he posted 25 feet, 3 and quarter inches, breaking his own school record. They won the triple jump at 49 feet, 8.25 inches. As for Donovan Watkins, he won the shot put at state title with a best toss of 61 feet, 11 and a half inches. Now these two helped lead Joplin to their best finish in more than 40 years.
it definitely feels great it's kind of sad because like you spend all this time getting to know all these people and like as soon as you guys start to hit your peak everybody has to go their separate ways but it was really just like a special moment for all of us seeing like all the hard work that we put in over the season really pay off at state it was definitely really cool i took a lot of hard work to get to where i wanted to be at um Throughout the season, I don't think that I did as good as I wanted to do, but throughout the season, I definitely got better uh, working technique, just hitting the weight room, just wanting to get better. The Crowder College Rough Riders are playing in the Junior College World Series in Grand Junction, Colorado. And the Rough Riders won their first game in walk-off fashion on Sunday, beating Central Arizona 5-4. And the Crowder is right back on the field tonight, trying to stay on the championship side of the bracket against Wabash Valley. And both of these teams End of the season ranked in the top five in the nation. First pitch is scheduled for 8.30 our time. I have the latest from this one right here tonight at 10. Well, speaking of Crowder, former Crowder All-American pitcher Aaron Ashby had a big night for the Milwaukee Brewers Monday night. Ashby picked up his first win of the season in the team's 3-1 win over the Cubs. Now he threw six innings, allowing just one run and striking out a career-high 12 batters. Ashby has a 2.70 ERA for Milwaukee this summer with 51 strikeouts and just 41 innings pitched. The Kansas City Royals dropped their series opener to the Cleveland Guardians last night 7-3. Tonight the Royals have a chance to even the series in Cleveland. This one already started with Kansas City down 6-2 in the top of the fourth. Andrew Benintendi is 1-2 for two with an RBI. I have highlights from this one right here tonight at 10. In the National League, Game 2 of the series tonight between the Cardinals and Padres. Cards took Game 1 last night and are aiming for their fourth win in five tries tonight. And that one just about to get going in St. Louis with first pitch coming at 6.45. And that's it for sports. We're back with more news after this. Take time now to honor a local veteran. Brian Blandimer served in the U.S. Army from 2002 to 2006. His hometown, Fredonia, Kansas, and we salute Specialist Brian Blandimer, a four-state hero. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14, how the Web City Farmers Market will soon provide free meals to local kids this summer. Plus, an area organization enters a partnership for a study on the economic impact of the nonprofit arts industry and how the rising cost of inflation is expected to impact your summer travel. Those stories and a lot more is coming up tonight on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. Hasbro may have counted the thimble out, but its fans have put it back into the game. The company announced on social media today that the token is returning to Monopoly. Yeah, the thimble there. Hasbro kicked off a throwback token campaign back in April. Fans of six retired pieces, the thimble, the horse and rider, the wheelbarrow, iron, boot, and money bag, could vote to have one game piece make a comeback. Voting closed earlier this month, and the thimble was apparently the fan favorite. Hasbro says it'll replace the current T-Rex token in a refreshed Monopoly series. Yeah, who knew they had a T-Rex? The new version of the board game is expected to hit U.S. stores in the fall and hit shelves internationally by spring of 2023. I don't know what any of that means. I've, really? Yeah, I've have you played have you played Monopoly the board game Monopoly with the tokens that you move? Not through? one time. Wow, you are the one. I guess I did other stuff. You've played I guess. Monopoly? I thought everybody had. I uh, me too. No. Uh, uh, the race car is the token that a lot of people want. You could be lying, and I wouldn't. <laughs> wow. Okay, we're going to have to introduce you to Monopoly, hmm. my friend. The weather all right, thunderstorms increasing for us tonight. Heavy rain threat, periods of storms tomorrow. Final sports news. We heard from Donovan Watkins, Donovan Fowler. They're roommates at State, longtime friends. we have more from them tonight at 10. We'll see you at 10, which is about enough time for one Monopoly game. Let's make it a great evening.